And so what I'm wondering in, in all of this is there's a seduction of surveillance. There's this notion that somehow if I can watch and if I can have an eye on the world as someone in a position of power, I can know and I can anticipate and I can find the secrets and I can unriddle the mysteries. But there's also this interesting potential sort of coming at the moment that by having all this information coming in, if I don't yet have the analytic skill, if I don't have the way of synthesizing all of this, then maybe I know, in fact, less that, that I might know before. What's that tension between, is it possible that all of us who are worried about surveillance are actually in some ways worried about the wrong thing? Is maybe somehow the absorption of all of this data and the fact that we're being watched in so many different ways, does that actually make it easier for us to hide in ways that, that we might have uh, in, in an earlier age? I don't know if you so, want to jump so in first. So I want to jump yeah, in please. first. Um, I've been thinking about wiretapping for a long time, first because I was very interested in cryptography, and then because I got very interested in wiretapping. And when I was working at Sun, it was very hard to work on wiretapping from a civil liberties perspective, both because there are plenty of people at ACLU who can do it a lot better than I can, and because it's not a Sun issue, it's not a Sun shareholders, stock shareholders issue. But um, it was of concern to Sun because wiretapping and building wiretapping capability into uh, communications networks does affect innovation and the pace of innovation. So Sun was very concerned about laws that would require that. Uh, so I had Sun interested. But this was the mid-2000s, and to go down to Washington and say, you can't build surveillance in because it's, it's bad for innovation is not a, an argument that would work <laughs> post-September 2001. However, you could talk about the threats to security. When you build surveillance into security, into communications networks, you create security risks. And in fact, you create lots of security risks. Security risks that parts of the government are actually quite concerned about. And so I began following this thread, pushed to it somewhat by necessity, but also pushed to it because it was in fact of great, int uh, great importance. And um, what, you what I have found as I began writing the second book was at one point I stopped and I said, now why is this person from the NSA talking to me and that person from the NSA talk? And that, uh, I began looking at all the different, are they using me? And I thought, well, wait a minute, if they're using me, they're using me in a way on an argument that I actually believe is correct. And I'm using them, and they're using me, and that's okay. Um, and so I would say that, yeah, within the government, there are people who say, sure, it would be nice to have that data. I can always use that data. But, you know, acquiring that data also puts us at risk. Mm -hmm. Building that stuff in puts us at risk. And that data isn't so valuable to me that it's worth putting us at risk. So I would say that within the government, you certainly see people who, who view it that way. I view it that way. There are lots of people outside the government who view it that way. That acquiring the data is not always so useful, and having the analytical skills that Sandra's talking about is actually critical. Can't think analytically. The data isn't going to do you any good at all. So, so Marcus.